informative, educational, objective, inclusive, comprehensive. This is Progress Report. Updates and conversations from the Government Information Service. Good day and welcome to another episode of Progress Report. Today is a very special episode because I am flying solo. I do not have my lovely co-host, Mr. Ivan Connor, with us today. And he sends his apologies. I'm certain he would have loved to have been here for this episode in particular because we're going to be getting into some very interesting conversations. And because with us today, we have the Gender Development Coordinator in the gen from the Gender Affairs Unit it, from the Ministry of Social Development and Education, Ms. Kimberly Murphy. Ms. Kimberly, welcome to the show. I am so excited to have you here. I am certain our listening and viewing audiences are in for a treat today. Um, we have worked closely together on a number of um, issues and a number of these events that you're going to be speaking yes. about. Yes. And so <clears throat> definitely excited for today's episode. I'm excited for persons to hear what is going on, especially in this month of November. Uh, we are in a new month. Happy November. And so welcome. Thank you, Glenniva. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Great. So, relatively new to the post, Gender Development Coordinator. Yes. How has that been going? What are you looking forward to the most being in that post? Tell us some about that. So, it's been a few um, challenging months. I was appointed in June and um, went straight into Men's Week um, 2022. Had like a week to plan that. Um, so it was hit the ground running, you know, feet to the fire. Um, so far, it's been really good. It's been a learning experience. I'm enjoying my time there and I'm looking forward to, you know, coming up with new initiatives and programs for the unit. Great. So let's just address the elephant in the room. Because you said, you know, you came in and you had one week to get into Men's Week. But I know a lot of times when people hear of the Gender Affairs Unit, mm -hmm. they think it is only for women. Men, yes, yes. <laughs> a lot of times we speak about gender and they go, oh, it's the women's rights, it's the women's issues. But you're saying that the Gender Affairs Unit deals with gender. Yes. Which is... Yes. <laughs> and, and I think maybe a good place for us to start is to speak about um, what is sexuality versus what is gender because of course mm -hmm. sexuality uh, are, 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 is, is what your is, is, speaks about your biological characteristics mm -hmm. while gender is more of a social construct and it speaks about you know what you're, you've been conditioned to be uh, um, the, the norms and the um, you know cultural characteristics that define you as a man or a woman. Um, so the masculine versus the feminine. feminine. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So I, and then of course there's other terms such as sexual orientation, oh. which speaks to, you know, your, your attractiveness, who you're attracted to, and um, gender identity, which speaks to how you identify, what do you define yourself as. So I think that's a good place for us to, okay. to, to start the conversation. Okay, so let's break this down. So you have sexuality, and that is male what and you, female, male or female, or what intersex, you, what you are born with biologically. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm I'm glad you brought up intersex because you we have persons who are born biologically born mm -hmm. with both male and female, female organs, organs mm -hmm. um, hormones, the the whole Works. range of what they're born with. Mm -hmm. So you have that sexuality. Yes. Then you have gender. Yes. 
and gender you say is a social construct yes. it's what you it's how society tells us women should, should behave be this way men, a man should behave that way your softness uh, and, and, as a woman yes, your hardness uh, you're, you're a man so you don't cry okay yes. so, oh. so, so those Ooh. so those characteristics oh yeah and, mm-hmm. and those characteristics I, I think you just said that you know society says that men shouldn't cry and so you're saying then that those characteristics can be positive or negative yes Yes. Okay, and we we can get into a little bit of that definitely, as well. Definitely. Um, then I think you said gender identity, mm-hmm. and so that is for persons who don't necessarily identify, identify the way. So, okay, so you may have someone who identifies as say, cisgender or transgender. So that's that's when you speak no about gender, or no gender, non-binary. non-binary. Okay. So that's that's when we speak about gender identity. And I know, in, especially in our community, we 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 confuse gender identity and sexual orientation. Ah, and yeah. that's the next yes. one. And so then, sexual orientation is who you are attracted to yes. as a person. As a person. Okay. Yes. So I think we've laid some groundwork. Yes. We know the difference between sexuality, gender, gender identity, and sexual orientation. Yes. That should assist us as we move Let's forward. Move along in the conversation. <laughs> in this conversation. <laughs> yes. So and so the unit then works to ensure that you know everyone, everybody in Angola, that you know we're treated with you know equal rights and responsibilities um you know that you know the services that are provided to us as as uh persons as human beings that you know they are equitable and you know that mm-hmm. social justice is carried out in in our society and um of course with conversations surrounding gender mainstreaming and gender awareness in the past we, we speak a lot about gender equality which says um give resources equal resources to everyone man woman boy girl child Mm -hmm. then we move on to gender equity that Mm -hmm. says there's different intersectionality between all of us so there can be a woman and there can be a woman with different um abilities Mm -hmm. they they don't need the same resources so gender equity speaks to providing persons with the resources that they need to live their optimal life and then the conversation of now transform and transcend to where we're speaking about social justice so it's it's saying let's instead of giving persons the resources that they need why don't we just remove the barriers ah, yes and oh, so so we so, so it's, it's, past. yes and so okay. now we're looking at systematic and um you know legislative changes to ensure that everyone in society are able to function to their best optimal best optimal potential sorry awesome yeah awesome i, I like that I've, you know i i like I like to see the progression and Mm -hmm. we as a society as whether it's you know just locally regionally or internationally we are looking at what challenges exist and Mm -hmm. you know initially it was like okay so there's a challenge let's see what we can give you the same same thing thing to overcome that challenge Mm -hmm. and then it's like okay you may not necessarily need this Mm -hmm. someone may need more of it because we do recognize that resources are limited are limited Mm -hmm. Uh and that and that persons have differing needs there and so we got to the equity and now we're saying okay resources are limited why not just remove the barriers systematic barriers that are there um you know the cultural barriers that are Mm -hmm. there and so it's it it, they're they're they're, that's where you use gender mainstreaming as a a mechanism and as a tool to now go into your communities and your and your government um your families and come up with different initiatives and programming to ensure that persons across the society are getting the resources that they're needed to, um, you know, to, to live their best lives, and that is where gender affair, the gender affairs unit comes in. Awesome, awesome, yes. I love it, and, and uh, you know, this follows really good after I think uh, the past few episodes that mm-hmm. we had, and it's going to lead right into where we are at the November no shave movement. I'm really excited to get into that again. My bearded colleague, he's <laughs> not here. <laughs> And I'm certain he would be the poster child for yes. No Shave November. Tell us a little bit about what spurred that movement. Is it something that was developed just here? Or is it an international no, movement? So November, and what is it? November <laughs> is an 
international um, organization and they do a lot of work um, around men's men's mental health um, prostate prostate cancer testicular cancer um, suicide awareness and prevention um, I we would have reached out to them to see you know how we can collaborate and, and whether or not we can use their 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 resources to put on some something of a similar initiative in Angola mm -hmm. so I'm working closely with the clinical psychologist and the um, community services plan I'm not sure if you're aware, but the unit is it's just a one-person unit. It's yes. just me. See, so, so um, and that is, scarce and that resources is across, again. Yes. That is across and the so, board because we uh, have had the clinical psychologists, mm -hmm. we've had the community um, services, services panel. panel. Mm -hmm. Both one woman unit. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so we have, we have really, um, you know, tried to ensure that we are we work together, we collaborate a lot mm -hmm. to ensure that we maximize those scarce resources that we have, so that we can, you know, reach our target audiences um, with with the initiatives that we're trying to put out in the public. So. We, we got together, we sat down and we, we looked at initiatives for, for men and you know there's a lot of conversations in the community now about men's mental health mm -hmm. and um, the clinical psychologist and the community services planner are already working on some initiatives in that area. So we sat down and we were like, okay, International Men's Week is coming up. This would be a perfect opportunity for us to lead on, on, us, on similar initiatives um, where we're targeting just our men in our community. Um, it's, it's a broader pitch to us because the unit is now looking at launching a national men's program. Mm -hmm. um, we have spoken to um, the... Uh, the the parliamentary secretary, Mr. Okay. Mer Honorable Mayor Richardson, yes, mm -hmm. and he had similar initiatives. And so the clinical psychologist and myself, we sat down with him. Um, we came up with some some initiatives that we want to roll out throughout the year. So not just. And Movember is just one of them uh, and so it's not just looking at just men's mental health but looking at um, lifestyle um, mm -hmm. etiquette um, fatherhood um, how, oh. to, how to function in a, in a relationship mm -hmm. um, so touching on every aspect of the man right um, ensuring that we provide them with holistic services that they can live their best potential because one of the one of the things that we have recognized is that over the years, we have tend to focus a lot on our women, and you know we're all about women empowerment, and I'm 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 I'm, I'm game for that, right? Um, women needs need to be empowered, and mm -hmm. we know the challenge is there, but we also feel as though our men in our community also need to be empowered, and we have seen where you know um there issues and challenges in the community that stems from, you know, um, our boys in the school, our boys in the home, um, you know, and so these are just targeted targeted initiatives that we're looking at to bring about some sort of change. Um, so Movember, mm -hmm. which as I've mentioned before, is an international movement mm -hmm. where they encourage men to grow out their mustache. Um, we kind of Put a little spin on it because we're, we're culturally aware mm -hmm. and you know, we figured okay let's add beards to ah. it because most men in angola tend to grow their beards it's, versus versus yes. their mustache so we have, we have added that bit to it and what we're asking is that for men in the community to to grow their beards and you you can post your pictures you can send it to um the gender affairs unit on facebook and um instagram is there, there a hashtag? Yeah, there's an hashtag. So it's yeah. men's mental health and also also hashtag Movember, right? Um, the idea is to fundraise. So we're asking for, you know, normally you go to the barber shop, you pay, what is it now, $20 or something like that? Oh, I have it's, no it's, idea. It's, it's, it's gone it's up. It's gone up. Okay, all right. I, I just know that so it's gone, gone up. Yeah, so whatever that is, we're <laughs> asking you to put that aside so that we can, ah. yeah, so that you can, you know, contribute um, to ensuring that the work that we're trying to put out it, you know continues um, so we want to ensure that uh, of course you know we have this safe outline so that's mm -hmm. one area that that we, we try to fundraise for throughout okay. the year um, where we're offering mental health support for persons mm -hmm. including men um, so when you do grow your beards we're not just saying just grow the beards out we want to see some action behind it so okay. if you can afford to we're asking for persons to donate um monetary support to, okay. to those initiatives right. yeah so the monies that you're saving um and the the barber fees yes. now barbers don't come after us no nope. because the fellas was just still, one month <laughs> and the fellas will still need a little shape up yeah you know that's that's fine but the difference between a full 
a full shaving and a shape up yeah. you're asking them to donate where can they make that donation so they can reach out to um, gender affairs Anguilla and we, we can, you can call 497-3930 uh, extension 3505 or you can just send us a message via Facebook or Instagram and we'll give you um, further details yes awesome so, and so mm -hmm. not, not to Go cut ahead. you but so as I mentioned before, the 19th is International Men's Day. Mm -hmm. And so the initiative, Movember, is just one initiative that we're looking at rolling out during the, the, the course of the month. Um, on the 19th, we're doing um, reality versus mentality. Um, the fly is out there in the public, so it's, it's going to be a frank conversation about men's mental health. Um, we're inviting men to come. Uh, it's, it's an open, safe space. Where? It's, it's at the Angola Music Academy, and that starts oh, at six o'clock. Yeah, that's a lovely space. Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. Um, there, it, it, we won't be carrying it live because we want to ensure that persons are able to share their experiences in a safe environment. And mm -hmm. so, we're inviting persons to come out. We're, we're we're going to be targeting men in the community. So whether you know you're in a church or you know in a community group, we're we're going to be reaching out to you. Um, the businesses, the business community, we have we have reached out to them, mm -hmm. and so we're trying to see how much or how many men we can get in that space where we can have just that targeted conversation. We have as our panelists, we have the Honorable Minister for um, Infrastructure, Ms. Mr. Hayden Hughes. We have um, Judd Budden. Um, yeah, and we also have Jermaine Payne. And okay. so those three men will be leading um, that, um, that intervention there for us. Awesome. I, I, I'm really excited to hear about this because as we stated in the beginning, I know a lot of persons feel as if the, when you speak about initiatives from the Gender Affairs Unit, mm -hmm. that it's only targeted yeah. towards women. And so it's always exciting to hear of initiatives that are solely for our men. And as I, there's, there's no um, hiding. Uh, in 2020, I was recognized during Women's Week as a women's rights activist. Mm -hmm. It is my life's passion. I love it. But I always say I believe in gender equity. Yes. And, and the reason, even as much as I am a women's rights activist, the reason I believe in gender equity is because unless our men are empowered, yeah. as women, we will continue to carry the burden. Yes, we will the, continue you, you, you to... You need to have your men right there along yes. with you to be yes. able to achieve those goals that we're trying to achieve of as, course. As, as women's rights activists. And, and so... It's, it's recognizing that yeah, yeah. yes and it is it is very disheartening sometimes to hear in our community the disparaging comments that are made towards persons who are women's rights activists as if though women's rights mean that you are taking something away from the men and what we're saying here today is recognizing that you also as 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 a woman as and recognizing the needs of a woman you recognize the need to ensure that we have solid men within our community exactly. men who are taking care of their health whether that is their physical health or, or their, their mental, mental health, health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because a lot of times when we don't deal with the whether it is the physical or the mental health, and we spoke about this with the representative from the Cancer Society, Mrs. Jennifer Gomes, when she was on here. Most times, women are the caretakers when men get sick. Yes, yes. Women are the caretakers um, when yeah. men have physical health issues. And most times, women are on the receiving end when, there's mental challenges. when there are mental challenges. That is true. And so it is so important that we recognize and that we allow for an outlet yes. for our men. And, and, and also giving men the space to say what is it that they need, mm -hmm. right? And so even with these initiatives that we have in, embarked on, we, we, we sat down, um, Dr. Um, um, Devonish, Banks definition and yes. my, yeah. So we sat down and you know we were like, okay, well we're women. We're trying to do initiatives for men. This does not look right. Mm -hmm. And so we would have reached out to men, you know, in the community just to get their feedback and to get their buy-in. So even the the, the title, okay. um, for the for the for the engagement, 
it, it was coined by the men, okay. right? The, the initiatives that we're leading on throughout the, the, the month of November, they're going to be led by men. We're okay. going to be in the background, right? Okay. So when you when you come to reality versus mentality, I won't be standing in front of the, the mm. stage speaking to you because I I can't say, you know, what are your needs as a man, mm. right? Mm -hmm. I, I think that as men, um, or as women, we should allow our men to yes. speak up and give them the space to do so, um, you know, where where it's confidential, where mm -hmm. where they where they don't feel judged, and mm -hmm. so um, this hopefully will be the start of, of that conversation in our community. Love that. I am um, I'm excited for what can come yes. from this, and yes. and, and, I, and 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 mm -hmm. not to cut you, but we do also have another initiative that's tied into that. Mm -hmm. um, we have the men wearing emotions. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so we we have we have <laughs> we we designed some lapel pins, and mm -hmm. it has. There are different color codes and there are different messages on them. And so we're trying to um, work with the business community. We've, we've sent out letters to them and hopefully we'll have quite a number of them joining us mm -hmm. in that initiative throughout November. And we want to encourage positive conversations in um, the workplace. So we're asking for persons to give out these spins to, to the men in the workplace. Um, you know, someone comes in in the morning, they're not feeling too well. Mm -hmm. They can put on a pin to them, not feeling 100%. Awesome. And so, you know, that that encourage some sort of conversation. Surrounding emotions. Are, uh, surrounding emotions. Ah. How are you feeling today? What can mm -hmm. I do to better support you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so we want to ensure that, you know, men have that space and that they feel as though, you know, it's okay mm -hmm. for them to express themselves. Um, and I know it's going to be, you know, challenging. I, I know it's culturally, that's not how we're, 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 we're taught mm -hmm. to, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. to, to encourage our men and, e and even as men, you know, they're not taught to express themselves sometimes. And so it's, it's going to take some work, and, but we're committed to do that. Mm -hmm. um, the, the community services planner, she also has um, the Family First program yes. that is also targeting men. And so it, we're looking at touching men in every aspect of the society, Great. right? So not just those who have on their suit and ties, but uh -huh. those who are unattached, yes. right? Those okay. who are in the workplace, those who are in the churches, those who are in the family. And so hopefully, you know, this, this is a start of a, a good um, shift a positive shift mm -hmm. in our community where, where men are able to better express themselves and, and speak out. Okay. And when we speak of the workplace and you know, again, we go back to gender mm -hmm. and we go to what that means and the societal norms that surround that. Mm -hmm. And I think of being able to express oneself emotionally are we hoping to have some of these pins available to persons on the construction sites? Yes. Yes. Because you know, yes. I, I, I'll yes. tell you, if you're, yes. you're around the guys a little bit, I, I, I just we're trying <laughs> we're trying to reach every man. Good. Because when you're around the guys and they go, you know, they they somehow see the guys that are sitting in the offices mm -hmm. as you know not as tough yes. as yes. those that are out there doing the hard physical, physical work. labor mm -hmm. um and so again taking it back to gender and those gender norms and what's expected it would be nice to be able to see that breaking down that yes this big strong man out here with a jackhammer mm -hmm. but he can see so he can express himself today, and he, I am confident in himself yes, to express himself i am yeah. I'm, I'm not at a hundred i'm going to jackhammer this thing yes. but <laughs> you know i am i am not feeling 100 today and and that's okay it yeah. is okay for me to not feel 100, 100. every day and and these initiatives you know over time, you'll see incremental changes, mm -hmm. right? But it's all about normalizing this as, as acceptable in our society, mm -hmm. as saying, okay, it's, it's okay, you can, you can express yourself. Um, and so it's, it's one of the things that we're trying to do. And it, seg it segue really nicely into 16 days of activism. Because we, we mentioned, you mentioned just now that in order for women to live their full potential to be empowered, 
we need to have the men right there along with us, mm -hmm. right? We, we need to ensure that our men are, are there mm -hmm. to support us. And in order for that to happen, we need to ensure that they themselves are empowered, mm -hmm. right? That they themselves are living their full potential. And so, of course, 16 days of activism deals with gender-based violence. And mm -hmm. we know that a lot of the times, majority of um, the perpetrators are men. Right? Statistic that, tells us that. And the victims are? Women. Okay. Right? And so, yes, we, we're, we're trying to really target men and address some of their challenges and hoping mm -hmm. that once you have that intervention, mm -hmm. then we can see some positive gains in other areas of our society. Mm -hmm. Right? Including gender-based violence okay yeah so I, I want to put this up there we've we've done quite a bit of work together mm -hmm. when as it relates to gender-based violence and oh, one of the things that you hear coming back especially when you are we are delivering the training and mm -hmm. speeches to persons um, and engagements with persons especially if it's a mixed group, group of mm -hmm. persons you hear a lot of but it's not just women it's men as well mm -hmm. and you spoke a little bit about statistics and i think it's uh, we have to state the men 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 are, are men survivors are also victims survivors mm -hmm. and and we tend to use the word survivor if you have survived because we try to take away that negative connotation, connotation. Mm -hmm. that's attached the negative connotation and the stigma mm -hmm. that is attached yeah um, to gender-based violence um, and the, the survivors are, and the persons who are on the receiving yeah. end of that. And, 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 it, and it goes back to men not speaking up mm -hmm. because while you'll have a woman uh, more likely to go and report an incident of um, domestic violence, a man most times will not do it right because and right back into the yes. gender norms yes mm -hmm. and the societal it's, it's, expectations it's, it's, yeah, you're, you're not supposed to do that you know how how, how, you, how, how you, you be a man and have a woman beating you right you know you can't have a woman talking to you a certain way yes. and so you know they they certainly most of the times hide that mm -hmm. um what i can say is that regionally um during the covid pandemic especially in islands such as st kitts um, they have seen an increase in reports from men. Oh. Uh -huh. Yes. Locally? In St. Kitts. Locally, I, I don't have any statistics to support, but I know for sure in St. Kitts they have reported okay. that they have seen an increase in men coming forward. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's, you know, stating that, I think it's also important to note that when we speak about the statistics of women being at the receiving end of gender-based violence, majorly we have to remember that these statistics are also international mm -hmm. and when you take into consideration certain countries and regions internationally mm -hmm. then you can understand and appreciate why the numbers are skewed in the way that they are yeah. you know and, and i think it's right now one in three women so you know in, in every for every three women one yes. is, yes. is a survival yeah and we're, we're not exempt from what's happening yeah. in across, internationally, across internationally if, yeah. if you look at what's happening in iran mm -hmm. in particular you know when you look at the oppression of women there and in Afghanistan and not wanting the girls to go to school mm -hmm. and so you can only imagine what's happening when there's some defiance and yes. some pushback mm -hmm. yeah, and, and that's what we're seeing in Iran right, right. Yeah. yes and so when you hear those numbers and I, I think persons get very especially in this part of the world they get mm -hmm. very offended when you speak those numbers but those numbers include are worldwide and yes the realities of women in other parts and I, I continue to say this and and and, and I'll say this Glenniva mm -hmm. um, despite the numbers none of us as women should be at the receiving end of abuse whether physically mentally emotionally financially, financially. we're human beings yes right yes it's it's, it's our right so mm -hmm. regardless one is too many I, right? I, I completely and, agree. And, and while in Angola we may not be at you know the, the numbers 
that are out there on an international level, mm -hmm. it's bad. Okay. Right? It's bad. Um, our statistics here says that um, over 40% 40, 40 of reported incidences are between intimate partners. And usually, it's the man who is the perpetrator. Yeah. So, and imagine in a small society like Angola, mm -hmm. where everybody knows everybody, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where we're all intertwined with familial ties and, and, yes. and so forth. I, I it's like, I like even more difficult for persons to report. Yes. So the yes. numbers that we have there, they're not really reflecting the, what's going on on the ground. Mm. And mm. so, you know, this is why we have the safe hotline yes. where persons can call in and, and, you know, express themselves and seek support. And a lot of the times persons seek support and they're not willing to go the extra step to report. Yes. Again, because we're a small society and there are so many, um, you know, barriers there to mm -hmm. making those reports. I, I like to say in Angola, there's no degree of separation between anyone. <laughs> no, you know, there's none. everyone. None. It's, it's, none. We are so connected. And, yeah. you know, while that is a good thing in some cases, in some instances, in it's, others, it it's, tends it's, to it's pose challenges. Yes. Yeah. And so... Again, I, I, I want to, and I want us to re-emphasize that this is not um, bashing against our men. No, no, definitely not. What we're saying is, is that we want our men to be in a space where they are healthy mentally, emotionally, emotionally physically, physically mm -hmm. and in that way they are embracing and supportive mm -hmm. of their women yes and of the women in the society that surrounds them whether that be and, and, and whether supported that's of, of supporting of themselves also oh yeah, yeah because it's an entire different conversation mm. right um but and it's every aspect yeah it's every aspect because of, of it's, it's respect it's respect for self yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and and that's where it stems and, from yeah respect yeah. for self respect for others yeah so 16 days of activism yes Yes. <laughs> so that is coming up. Um, it's an international campaign to bring awareness to gender-based violence. And every year that's from the 25th of November to the 10th of um, December. So it starts on the um, International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women and Girls, which is no November 25th. Mm -hmm. And this year that falls on a Friday. And so we're, st yes. And so we're starting off our um, series of events on that Friday. Um, we have quite a number of initiatives that we're trying to push out for the 16 days. Um, key to that is our national rally, mm -hmm. which we're dubbing Arrange Anguilla. Um, and so it's going to be a motor rally where we have um, vehicles approaching from both ends of the island, so from eastern and western. We'll converge in the valley and then we're going to march from a specific point in the valley to the route will um, gazebo. At Ruth Will, we will have, um, you know, testimonials. Um, we do have uh, some survivors who will be speaking. Um, we have persons from NGOs, persons from the churches, um, different sections of society that are coming out and uniting as one voice to end um, violence against women and girls and our men too. So ending mm -hmm. gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've been very careful in. Um, you know, I've, you know, I have, um, you know, communicated the message. You know, I, I, I specifically left it as um, gender-based violence, okay. and not, um, you know, just saying, okay, we're 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 rallying against violence against, against women and girls because mm -hmm. we know in Anguilla that we have a perennial issue in terms of, you know, violence against our young 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 persons, and so um, hopefully this rally will be, you know, a, 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 an opportunity for persons to come together and, and unite as one voice to, to say, this is not okay. Mm -hmm. Whether, whether you know, whether, whether the, the violence is against a woman, a girl, a boy, or a man, it's, mm -hmm. it's simply not okay. okay. And in our small society, we, we are saying, no. Okay. And, and so we, we have been meeting with um, stakeholders to plan that rally. Mm -hmm. It's going to be on the 27th of um, November, which mm -hmm. is a Sunday, and we're hoping to start at 3 o'clock. And so we should wrap up, yeah, 3 p.m. in the evening, in the afternoon, and we should wrap up around 7.30ish. Okay. Yeah. So this is a opportunity to bring your family out. Yes. If you're living on the eastern side, 
you we start there for you mm -hmm. if you're living on the western side of the island we start there for you so tell us a little bit more about that what are the starting points are we going to be having any stops along the way yes so we will be doing some stops um in the different communities i unfortunately don't have the paperwork here with okay. me but i can tell you that we're planning to start on, in the western part of the island we're planning to start at the church of god of prophecy west in west end okay. we are hoping to stop at the well I know that we have. So um, this is this is the well in the Bedness Hollow yes. in Long in, yes, in Long in, Long in, Long Bay. Because there are two wells. Is this the well along this is the, the one main road, road, or road, is no, it the one down in Bedness yes. in on the Bedness side road? Yes. Okay. So we're stopping there, mm -hmm. and then we're also going to stop at Blowing Point, um, and I believe we also have a stop in Sandy Ground on okay. the eastern part we're starting at, at the pier um I believe this is the island hub yes up the island hub up here okay. and i believe we're stopping um in east end where people usually um okay so this is just outside yeah. of the east end the primary Mar school, Spencer Pool primary school. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay um and i believe we're also stopping in ray hill and um i think we're stopping in the quarter also yeah okay yeah great so we have quite a few stops and the stops will be used to share information um we're going to have the brochures pamphlets we'll have speakers speaking um we're going to have members of our mental health and psychosocial support unit that's going to be out there mm -hmm. to provide any sort of support for persons who are underground and need that that um that that support at that point in time um it's going it's it's basically to, to bring awareness to, okay. to gender-based violence um, a lot of persons may not know what we what we mean when we say GBV mm -hmm. and so we want to educate the community on, on, on what it is what what it looks like how to identify it what sort of services are available yeah awesome and what I, I really appreciate about this and and Kimala and myself we had some <laughs> real <and> <laughs> uh, some real discussion surrounding this rally and yes. I, I, I'm going to say I definitely appreciate the fact that you have taken on board the suggestion to, to allow it to be a moving mm -hmm. rally mm -hmm. yeah. so that persons, even if they can't make, make it, it to, to the, the valley, valley. Yeah. you are going to be able to hear this message no yes. matter where you are. Yes. And so I think that it is important and that I, I am thankful that you have taken that on board um it's for me it is very exciting to see this come to life we've uh, we've discussed this from yes, inception yes, and yes. to see and, this really yeah, come and, to and fruition. i must um, say the response mm -hmm. from the community has been amazing in terms of the rally um or churches or ngos they're they're like ready um they, they've they've been very receptive and you know providing their feedback and so we're looking to have you know a successful event um we're asking for persons to come out in their orange the mm -hmm. unit will have t-shirts on sale for a low cost of 15 us dollars Okay. Yes. Yes. And, and when are these shirts? These going shirts to be should be ready by the end of next week. Yeah. Okay. I know the supplier okay. um, is supposed to get them in this week, so they should okay. be ready by the end of next week. So you can always. Um, we are in commercial complex, so you can always come up and purchase your T-shirt um, from from the ministry. Yeah. Awesome. And if business places wanted to purchase those shorts in bulk for their um, employees mm -hmm. or employees want is that something that is being encouraged as well I yes know yes the way that they do for October mm -hmm. and you wear your pink yes yes that's and you can you can certainly do that um, you know if you want to design your own shirt in support with your um, business name or your community or your um, community organization you can definitely do that um, we we want to orange and willow Right, we mm -hmm. want to paint, paint the community orange throughout that 16 days um, period. Um, we want you to come out to the rally, not just <laughs> um, empty handed. So, we're asking you to come out with you know your banners, placards, oh. you know, your messages of support. Um, and then, one other thing that I want to point out also is that throughout the 16 days, we're hoping to also launch an online safe space where persons can go and leave messages. So, if, if, you're, if you're a survivor, if you have experience with domestic based violence you can go there and share your story if you are just someone who wants to share a, a message of support to someone who's going through it at the moment you can do so mm -hmm. and it's going to be a safe space um, your, your email addresses your names um, that's not going to be captured and so that's gonna that that will be available at our website yeah and you touched on something that I kind of want us before we even speak about some of the other activities for the 16 days mm -hmm. 
we use the terms somewhat interchangeably, but I think it's important for our listeners to grasp mm -hmm. what is the difference between gender-based violence and domestic violence. So domestic violence is a form of gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the overarching um, term is gender-based violence. Domestic violence is, 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 um, is a form. So, so it's a subsection of yes, it. Yes. Yes. So and within there you can have sexual violence mm -hmm. um, because domestic violence don't have to be sexual right. um, and you have intimate partner violence and that's where persons are in a relationship um, there's rape there's mm -hmm. um, sexual harassment um, there's human trafficking mm -hmm. and yes we do have human trafficking in Angola um, and mm -hmm. there's sexual assault which well, well falls yeah. under sexual so, violence yeah. okay mm -hmm. yeah and then so and then under domestic violence mm -hmm. I think it's important Physi that we, physical we, abuse, we break sexual down abuse, what? Yes. financial abuse, um, emotional abuse. Um, what am I? What am I missing? So Physi we physical, needed physical, sexual, physical, emotional, financial. financial. I feel like I'm missing mental, one. Mental, <laughs> mental. Yes. yes. Yeah. Which is emotional. Which is yes. Yeah. Which yeah. kind yeah. of breaks. Still kind of between, like mental, between this yes. one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. So, and so mental and verbal. Ab verbal abuses yes. so we will be sharing information on all of those um throughout mm -hmm. the week it's it's we're gonna have you know flyers on on, fa on our facebook pages well on our social media pages so persons can gain that information um i'm also going to be going to the different radio stations to speak more about it um you know to you know define some of these terms so persons mm -hmm. are, are well aware of, of what's what they are here yeah. awesome so we have we know we're starting on the 25th of November, mm -hmm. that's the beginning mm -hmm. of um, the 16 days of activism. On Sunday, the 27th, when we'll, that's when we'll have the rally. The big Orange rally. Angola, yes. So what's happening? What's happening on the Friday? What's happening on so the 25th? On the Friday, we're hoping to do a um, cocktail reception in recognition of the Angola National Council of Women's um, 40th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> and she's oh, laughing because she's like... <laughs> I, 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 if Ivan was here, Ivan would remind everyone that I wear so many different yes, hats. Yes. And so, <laughs> Laneva is the current president of the Angola National Council of Women. And this year is, this is their 40th um, anniversary and it's the umbrella, umbrella organization um, for women in Angola. And so, we, we work very closely with the ANCW to carry out um, programs and initiatives. And and what, uh, it would be remiss of me to not take the opportunity that, yes, while this organization is celebrating its 40th year, and I think that is testament to so many of the women that came before me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just passing through, and the walk that was done by so many of these women I want to encourage other women to come on board and to continue the work that has been done. You know, a lot of the advancements mm -hmm. that in terms of women's empowerment and yes, that we we have been able to enjoy mm -hmm. here in Anguilla has been a result of the hard work of a number of those women and I would get in trouble if I was to start open my mouth names. and start to call names but in particular I want to I want to mention my immediate past president because I know she listens every, everything every day <laughs> she listens and she'll send me a message Madam P I'm listening so to so my immediate past president Mrs. Also Webster Brooks she is she, so passionate about women's empowerment she is and she is very passionate about ensuring that the history yes. is also passed on. I remember when I got the post, mm -hmm. she met me with a big old book <laughs> and she did, this is it, <laughs> you know? And, and, and we can spend hours speaking about the work that has been done because I, I know we had a meeting recently and she, yes. she'll tell you, she writes, she writes everything, everything down. Everything. And so- She's it, a wealth of knowledge. She is. And I think it's important that younger women um, and, and just women across the spectrum that we continue to give back yes. in a way that was given given to us. So I encourage women to reach out and join the organization and continue the work um, by the pioneers that have come before us. 
Yes. So we have that reception on on, on the Friday. Okay. And then um, the Monday, which is the twenty eighth, um, we'll be collaborating with the Angola Civil Service Association to do a training workshop on um, violence and sexual harassment in the workplace, and we're looking specifically at um, policy formulation. So. Regionally, there is now a policy that's led by the um, Caribbean, I think it's a Caribbean Employers Union. I don't, I don't want to give the wrong word, okay. um, the wrong term. But, but yeah, so they have a regional um, policy that they've worked on. And so this is just going to be an opportunity for us to um, introduce that policy to, um, you know, HR personnel, managers, owners in, business, in the um, public and private sector here in Anguilla so that they can be aware of it, speak a bit about, you know, what is um, sexual um, harassment in the workplace, what that looks like, and, you know... Um, the, the, the whole objective is at the end for persons to go back to their respective organization and then, you know, um, look at that policy, see where it fits with them, you know, take away what needs to be um, taken away and, you know, develop their own um, okay. policy to guide their, their workplace. Um, Another initiative that we're doing on the Tuesday, My Actions Matter campaign. Oh. Uh, yes, and I'm very, very excited about this one. I had a meeting with uh, Mrs. Carty at the ALHCS yesterday. Um, so it's going to be, it's targeting young persons, so particularly those in fourth and fifth form. Okay. So we're going in, we're going to be having um, an engagement with them, kind of like an assembly, and um, we're going to have them in the auditorium for 45 minutes, and mm -hmm. we'll be touching base on uh, key um, issues and topics that, you know, relate from consent, toxic wow. masculinity, gender norms and sexist jokes, um, mm -hmm. what that looks like, you know, what is acceptable, what is not. Um, we, we, we know that how young persons, they are, you know, into social media and so mm -hmm. we have also identified um, some influencers in the school <laughs> who will be leading on you know just getting that message out and encouraging persons mm -hmm. um, to, to really um, speak up and you know um, recognize that you know things that you say things that you do um, you know some things may be offensive um, you know how you interact with your fellow peers in school. Um, so those type of conversations we're trying to have in the school, um, we're going to uti be utilizing social media, so TikTok, Snapchat, all the cool, ah. cool, cool yeah. apps that these young people are using. I'm so glad you went there because, mm -hmm. again, I, I really miss Ivan today because this is where I usually crack a joke at his age. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I did have the opportunity to go into the school, I think, maybe last year. Mm -hmm. And I we were speaking about um, cyberbullying. Yes. And I asked the question, you know, how many of you use Facebook? And it hurt my feelings. <laughs> how did because you use Facebook? They said, anymore? Miss, that's for old people. Yeah, they don't. And that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it really did. So yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm really happy. happy is to happy to partner where it's at, and they yes, they and have Snapchat. they have they have two. Well, the teachers were able to identify for me um, two um, main influences in the school in that um, yeah. fourth oh. fourth and fifth form. Okay. So I'll be um, awesome. you know use, um, utilizing their services to nice. to yeah. you know help to spread that that message. And so we're asking mm -hmm. them to use the hashtag My Actions Matter mm -hmm. in in the in their um, posting um, for that. Um, 25 sorry 16 days this of activism okay. yes mm -hmm. great yeah so moving on mm -hmm. the first of december of course is um world aids day mm -hmm. and um uh, usually the i'm going to come into action network they have they offer their free hiv um health fair so mm -hmm. that will be um on that day the third that's um, the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, and um, that is when the Angola Amateur Athletic Athletics Association will be hosting their race against AIDS. Mm. Yes, okay. on the 5th of December is International Volunteer Day. And oh, there's a day yes. for volunteers. Yes, nice. there is. And so I'm, I'm trying to work um, with the different um, 
CSOs across mm -hmm. the, the, the island to see if we can come up with a national um, initiative for that day. Okay. Um, it's not cemented as yet, so once okay. I do, I'll, I'll put that out. And then in the evening, we'll be having a family night, and that is, that's in collaboration with the Department of Education, the Special Education Needs Unit. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so we'll be having okay. dance therapy for um, families um, with um, special education needs children, children. and so it's going to be an interactive night for parents and children to come out and, and you know enjoy themselves. Okay. On the 6th, we're going to be having a women's forum <laughs> under the theme GBV, gender-based violence, mm -hmm. not just a woman's issue, mm -hmm. but a social and health issue and so it's going to be a panel discussion this is in um, collaboration with the Sir Optimist International the Angola um, chapter for that um, and so we'll be working closely with um, Ms. Angelina Mohamed Carty and her mm -hmm. team there at Sir Optimist to pull that off um, it's going to be at the Sir Optimist Center um, we'll be having representatives from um, safe from the health sector, um, from social services, pr private sector, um, hopefully from the safeguarding unit, and it's really just to dissect um, the implications um, in terms of um, gender-based violence in our society, mm -hmm. particularly in our health and our social sector. And we know that um, when we talk about social and health, that pretty much to have into every aspect of you know mm -hmm. of our lives mm -hmm. so um, it will be you know just for us to pinpoint and you know look at you know what what, what are the impacts of gender-based violence on our society um, and hopefully you know that will be uh, an event where persons will come out and gain some more information um, hopefully persons will leave from there with the sense that okay this is how I can contribute mm -hmm. in ensuring that, you know, um, we eradicate um, some of the violence against our um, women and girls across the island. Is that something that's going to be live streamed for persons yes, who cannot come yes, out? Yes, that will be live streamed for sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and then we end um, 16 days of activism with um, the 10th of December, which is Human Rights Day. Mm -hmm. um, we're collaborating with Department of Youth and Culture again, like we did last year for Art to Rise, um, where it's gender based violence through art. And so this year we're partnering with Paint Studios um, and we'll be. Um, they'll, well, they will be <laughs> designing a mural. Ah. So, yes, yeah, so um, artists across the island, um, they will be coming together. Uh, oh, and also the Angola Football Association, they, they were so kind to offer us a space on their wall. Yes. Ah, awesome. And so it's going to be a mural where persons can go and see, you know, what is, what is domestic um, based violence you know, from the eyes of those artists okay. um, and so it's going to be a, a collaborative process because the artists will be coming together um, each person will have their section um, it will be a case where you know there's there's um, you know, it's not planned out. Ah, yeah. So okay. you so know, this is, so the, the this is the, free form the free art. Form in, art yes. Okay. And so the, the the whole idea is that you're there. We have um like a live video, and so you can see it come to life. Um, and hopefully, um, synergy and you know that um creative process yes, of course will, will will kick in, and um nice. we should have a, a piece that's going to be um, reflective of um th their perspectives, and hopefully you know will bring awareness to gender based violence. So it'll be an area where persons can go and you know take their Instagramable photos <laughs> uh, yes um, and hopefully you know persons can you know look at that and you know see and, and identify with you know what it is um, that it is gender-based violence and how they can you know better support um, persons who are survivors so from the looks and sounds of this mm -hmm. you have a busy next six weeks Yes. planning and executing yes, as yes. we move through November and we look at International Men's Day which remind us again is on the, the 19th of November okay and, and mm -hmm. go ahead sorry yeah, it's on the 19th of November. 19th of November. Mm -hmm. And so we're having um, Reality versus Mentality on the 19th. Um, and that's going to be at the Angola Music Academy. That starts at 6 o'clock. We're inviting all men from all walks of life to come out. Is there a cost? No, it's free of charge. Nice. It's free of charge. Free of charge. Nice. Um, and it's, it's a safe space for men to speak about um, you know, their challenges and experiences um, with mental health. Um, then I, I totally, this totally slipped my mind. Um, the 20th, which is the Sunday, 
Mm -hmm. um, over the years, um, the unit has collaborated with the Ebenezer Men's Fellowship and the UBI Open Campus and Gwilis site to put on a service um, to commemorate the International Men's Day. So that will be happening on the 20th, which is a Sunday, and that's going to be at 5.30 at the historic Ebenezer Chapel. All right? Okay. Um, usually, you know, it's, it's, an, it's a really good, um, you know, engagement and um, fellowship with the men um, across the island. They come out from the different churches and so forth. There's cultural presentations. Um, we usually gives out, give out award in recognition of men in our community who are, you know, mm -hmm. doing leading on some initi key initiatives. So um, that is something that persons can look forward to. I actually have a planning meeting for that this afternoon. So I'll be putting out more information on that as we um, mm -hmm. move along. So that is the 19th to 20th. And throughout the month, we're asking for men to... Um, keep their beards and their mustache to grow them out um, and to also contribute funds that they would have utilized um, in going to the barbers to you know, shave their beards and mustache to um, the Gender Affairs Unit to lead on um, our National Men's Program initiatives that where you could look at targeting um, programs and activities um, around men empowerment um, and also um, lifestyle skills and etiquette for men. The, and then that segues quite nicely into the 16 days of activism from the 25th of November to the 10th of December. Right. And um, we would have put out a press release yesterday about November, or Movember, mm -hmm. right? Um, and before the end of the week, the press release for 16 days of activism will Brilliant. be out, yes. Mm -hmm. Great, so I just really wanna say thank you for taking the opportunity to come in, let us know what's yes. happening, with the gender affairs unit some of the exciting things that are happening there and as always there's always an open invitation you. for you to join us here on progress report and hopefully the next time you come back Ivan will be here and we can get into a very engaging and robust discussion even more than today yes, uh, because yes. I feel uh, today I felt like I I think we've covered you, quite a lot though. we did yes. but I think today I felt like I was straddling both sides <laughs> because a lot of this again is not new to me we collaborate mm -hmm. quite mm -hmm. often on a number of these issues and bringing awareness to the community yes, yes. letting them know about gender based violence yes, yes. And again, really excited for the public to hear of the initiatives, especially yes. those involving our men, so that we can no longer see mm -hmm. gender affairs is only for women. Yes, it, yes. it really and, and, addresses. And, and, and I mean, over the years, the unit has lead on you know initiatives that mm -hmm. that target men. Mm -hmm. um, we're just now taking a more you know focused approach in terms of and, and the, the 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 thought process around the national men's program has been you know here's in the making um so i definitely want to you know give um kudos to um dr rania foykana who's my predecessor would have led um some yes. of the work on that um also we are working on our national agenda policy and mm -hmm. we should have a draft of that before the end of this month um that oh, will go to all, go all to my permanent reason, secretary all the more reason for you to come back yes <laughs> and yeah for sure because i'm really excited about the policy because then you know that will provide me with that with a framework to work um, mm -hmm. within you know to guide what we're doing at the, in the unit and to really um, take a st strategic approach to, to the work of the unit so I'm, I'm excited about that um, there will be stakeholder consultations so definitely look out for that yeah okay great so again thank you so much Kim Aloy, for being it's here my with pleasure. us Thanks for having me this has been another episode of Progress Report, updates and conversations from the government information system. We thank you for joining us and we look forward to having our next guest um, on our next episode. And again, we want to say a really huge shout out to our producer Carvel Fleming of Lev Rock Studios, our radio station partners, Upbeat Radio, Radio Anguilla, Cool FM, Advent Radio, um, and I think there's one more that I am forgetting. Um, it's not Rainbow FM. 
and we are also on streaming platforms we are on youtube we are on your favorite podcast spotify apple podcast and on facebook of course for those persons who are older like the young people <laughs> say so again Thank you for joining us. Get on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've 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 discussed that. Yeah. So maybe I'll maybe I'll the old folks, Ivan and myself, we'll discuss whether or not we move towards TikTok. So again, thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time.